Hey everyone, Zeph and Moses here, and today I've got a Blackmagic Micro Studio Camera 4K G2 from Blackmagic. And uh, thank you Blackmagic for sending this over. They heard that I'm mostly a Canon shooter and they said, we need to fix that. We're gonna send you a couple cameras to test out. Today, I just wanted to make a video about the camera control and how you actually connect a Blackmagic camera to an ATEM switcher. So I've got the ATEM HD8 ISO model and this camera, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how these are connected, how they're talking to each other, and I'll show you over on the ATEM software control what we need to do over there. So, let's get started with the camera. Uh, first of all, when I receive the camera, this is a quick note for anyone, you can only do the camera control on a Blackmagic camera. So, you can't just grab a Sony camera, a Canon camera, any other camera, from a different brand or manufacturer and do that camera control. This has to be a Blackmagic camera. But when I received this, this camera was set by someone else who had it before me to 4K. And what happened was I plugged it into this HD switcher and I got nothing but black. And I checked my cables, I made sure all the inputs and outputs were set right, black. And what I found was that I had to take an HDMI cable out of this camera into a monitor so that I could see the menu and then go into the menu and set it to the proper resolution. So 1920 by 1080, and I could also set my frame rate from that menu system. So just a quick note, if you get one of these cameras and you're struggling to get a feed up on your ATEM, there's a good chance that it's outputting a different resolution than what the ATEM is compatible with. You need to get that down to 1920 by 1080, and you can also set that frame rate over the HDMI output. Now there is also a setting for a clean feed, in which case, you might struggle to see that menu system. Uh, so you wanna make sure you don't turn that off. It will be clean over the SDI output, which is what I have going into the switcher today. So let's talk about how this camera is connected to the ATEM switcher because there's two cables that you need to run if you're gonna do this over SDI. Now this camera has micro BNC ports. They're a lot smaller than the full size BNC connection. So you're gonna have to get some micro BNC to full size BNC converters or adapter cables here. So you can see mine, uh, they're micro out of the camera and then they're full size right here where they connect to my SDI cables. Now those cables go into the ATEM. There are eight inputs that are SDI on the ATEM as well as eight SDI outputs on the ATEM. The reason for the outputs is that they are going to send back a program return feed. So if you're using the bigger studio cameras, you're going to be able to see that program return feed. This obviously doesn't have a monitor or a screen on this one, so we can't see that right now. But that return feed is also sending that camera control information. So we've got our SDI output, it's going to the input of the ATEM, and we have the SDI output of the ATEM going to the input of the camera. That's where the information is traveling. Once I do that, something else that I wanna do is over on the ATEM software control, I'm gonna go into my settings, and usually what I'll like to do is I like to label my sources. So in this case, instead of it being camera one or camera two, uh, what I might do is go in here and say like, this is my G2 micro camera, just so I can pay attention to, to what that shot is. Uh, but another thing is you want to be able to map the camera. So if you go into the preferences and you go to mapping, you can tell it that it is the Micro Studio Camera 4K G2. So you tell it what type of camera it is. Once I've done that, I'm pretty much good to go. Camera's plugged in, it's connected. And the way you can verify that is if you go over to the camera tab on the ATEM software control, you'll see a little like on air when you take that camera live. So like right now, if I switch to camera two on my switcher, that camera is no longer live. And you've got a tally light here that you can confirm on the front of the camera. So if I switch back to camera one, I'll get my tally light is red. I know that the camera is seeing the ATEM because it's receiving that information on that camera return feed, that SDI return feed back to the camera. So if I wanna color grade this or color shade this is usually the term that they'll use in the industry, we head on over to the camera tab on the ATEM software control. And once in that tab, you've got full control over the camera. So I can adjust my gain if my image is not bright enough your gain is kind of like your ISO setting. So your base ISO is going to be at zero dB. And then if I make it brighter from there, two dB, four dB, you'll see the camera shot gets a little bit brighter. Uh, right now, I don't need to set that gain because our shot is plenty bright. Same thing with shutter speed. If you were setting your shutter speed, you can do it right here from the ATEM software control. 
and then of course your white balance. In this case, we're using 5600 Kelvin lights in this room, so we don't have to change that. We could do a custom white balance and figure out what the other cameras are and sync that up identically, but it's a different sensor. The cameras shooting this video are Canon, and this camera right here is Blackmagic, and if we're trying to sync them up, that white balance might be slightly off. So you can get yourself a white balance card or anything that you can use to white balance off of, and you can kind of dial that in. Now with this being 5600, you'll still probably notice that on this camera feed, uh, if you look at the backdrop behind me, it's a little more bluer than the backdrop on the other cameras, it's a little more purple, and that's where the color shading comes in handy. So we have this little icon right here. This expands our color shading so we can see it in a bigger menu. You can always do it from right here and click through your lift, gamma, and gain, but if you click this guy, it'll bring it out. You can see a whole lot more settings here, and then this is where we can really dial that in. So if I wanted to tweak the colors here in the lift. I can click and drag this little guy. You'll see it's adding more purple to my face, which I don't want. So we would obviously go more for that golden skin tone here. And I'm not gonna get this perfectly just because we're, we're testing this out. We can also close the iris down a little bit, get a better exposure. Now with gamma, we can tweak our gamma here. And you'll see as I do it in the ATEM software control, it's all happening live on the spot. It's sending that feed back to the camera. But something else that I wanna show you is that you can do this now in this ATEM. On the smaller ones, like the minis and the extremes, you don't have an LCD panel, so you can't actually see all this stuff. But all of this stuff is right here on the ATEM and you can dial it in from here. And before I jump into that, one quick note is that you wanna make sure that you're using a monitor that is calibrated or at least a monitor that's made for production purposes. So if you're using something like a computer monitor, you're not going to get a perfectly color accurate scenario to really sync up your cameras. I highly recommend production monitors. They are made to work with production frame rates. So like if you've ever used a computer monitor and you see that it doesn't work with 24 frames or it doesn't work with 2997, that you have to go to 60 just to get the monitor to work, probably because you're using a computer monitor and not a production specific monitor that was designed to be used in this scenario. And that way you'll get a more color accurate image when you're trying to shade this and color this in. But real quick, I just wanted to show you if I hit the camera button on the ATEM, I can cycle through the various camera settings all from right here. So if I go to select camera one using the select button, then I've got this whole screen. I can adjust my contrast. You'll see if I adjust this here, it's adjusting live on the spot and I'm just dialing this in. And I'm not using a calibrated monitor for this. So obviously I just have to kind of eyeball it. I'm also a lot further away from my screen to see what's actually happening. But you can see all of this gets adjusted from right here, right on the ATEM. So I've got two different ways that I can do this. And as I cycle through that cam setting, I can see I've got my iris here so I can stop down, make this brighter. However I want to tweak that, I can do it all right here from the ATEM. Additionally, if I want to adjust the master red, green, and blue settings, like let's say we need to tweak this and get some of the blue out of there, it's going to make my face look really yellow for this image. So it's not ideally what I want to have, but we can adjust this all from right here and try to get it exactly dialed in and where we want it to be. I'm actually going to take this iris and make this a little slightly darker. My face is kind of blown out here. But you can see as we adjust this all on the ATEM, it's gonna happen live on the spot. And then we get those skin tones dialed in. I am not gonna get that to perfection on this video. There's no way I'd have to sit here for quite some time to do that and dial it all in. But just know that all of these controls happen from right here. Now, two other controls you wanna think about are zoom and focus. Now with Blackmagic cameras, they don't have a full-time servo autofocus, so it's not going to constantly track you. Like if I was on a stage or moving in and out of focus, it's not going to follow me as I do that. That's where the uh, production studio cameras are great to have as manned cameras as opposed to unmanned cameras. But if you need to redo your autofocus, there's a button in the software control in the bottom right corner. And if you have your subject here, like let's say I wanted to focus on my hand, I'm going to click the autofocus button and it will do a one shot autofocus. It'll autofocus. Now you can see I'm out of focus, but my hand is in focus when I put it up here. Now, if I've got my face back in the frame and I hit focus again, 
it will focus back on me. So it, it's a one-click autofocus. It's not going to constantly follow someone around on a stage. So just keep that in mind. The other thing is zoom. So this particular lens on this camera, I can zoom physically, right, with my hands. But if I had a power zoom lens, and there's very few of them, but micro four thirds lenses are what this camera takes. If I had a power zoom lens, I could actually zoom in and out using this control right here within the ATEM software control. Now, I don't have a zoom lens today for these purposes, but just know that if you have that lens, it's really nice because this camera could be on the other side of the room. You could zoom in and out. You could adjust the focus. You can set the white balance all from the other side of the room. Now, the only thing you can't do is you couldn't pan or tilt this camera. So you kind of have to get this set up and where you want it right from the get-go. But all in all, this makes life super easy, especially if you're using these cameras as like maybe a wide shot in the back of the room, just get it nice and level. They're also really good for putting up right at the edge of a stage or somewhere where you want the camera to be mostly hidden and tucked away, but getting it into those tight spots that are harder to reach. It's a fantastic little guy, takes micro four thirds lenses. The battery is a Canon LPE6 battery, which was an interesting choice, but it does come with the DC uh, power connector. So you can just power this over DC and you're good to go from there. Additionally, if you had alternatives like maybe a V-mount battery, you could get a V-mount to DC coupler, and then you could power these guys off of V-mounts. Now note that to get into the menu on this camera, there's only a few buttons on the front. It's a menu, up, down, set, and power button. Fortunately, there is a power button on this. I know the ATEMs don't have power, but you have to go through that menu system if you wanna set things like uh, the resolution, if you wanna set the frame rate. That can't be set from within the ATEM, so you have to hook up a little HDMI monitor to this guy. But I really love the form factor. It's just, it's so darn small. It's got mounting points on all the sides here, so I can mount it any which way I need to with maybe a little magic arm, or in this case, it's just right on a tripod. Absolutely love the camera. So this is the video on how to connect it and control it over SDI. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.